It is Wednesday, January 27th, 2021. It is 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and so you know what time it is. It's time for a little bit of coin metal. And it was yet another non-virtual get-your-ass-kicked at Jiu-Jitsu Wednesday. I got to work with a very good gentleman. Unfortunately, a small accident did happen in... Uh, I accidentally clipped him in the chin. We were doing a uh, we were doing a back take maneuver, and uh, just to set it up, <clears throat> it starts with your opponent on their back, and you getting past their guard by pushing down slightly on their shin, kicking the leg out, and then bringing it up alongside their opposite hip, swinging their or grabbing the outside knee and pulling it over while you go into knee on belly. And then, of course, they try and Gramby roll out of that. And when they do, you catch it, and you do a knee slice entry. And from the knee slice, this is this is where I was having the most trouble. You, <laughs> you do a knee slice, and you get into side control, right? And... From this position, you got the the uh, leg hooked, and you want to retain it because you're going over and and you want to catch it with your legs. And it, this is where I was having the most trouble. Is that? I, and I saw somebody do it a a slightly different way than it was instructed to me, and the I I preferred it that way only because it it made more sense to me. It seemed easier. Is that? Once you're in that side control, you keep the knee captured, right? So if you're if you're on your right your opponent's right side, you want to have their their left leg, and you're hooking it, right? You're hooking it from underneath, or or even going from over to the top. I, I suppose it would work either way. But you really pull the leg over, you know, like you really roll back to your right side to pull that leg over, and then. You hook it with the bottom leg. So in this case, it would be my left leg. I'd be hooking around the back of my opponent's leg. And then from there, doing a lockdown, right? And so the the part that I was having the most trouble with is you got to reach through with your left hand. I was trying to reach through with my right hand. But if you reach through with your left hand, your body will roll the right way. <laughs> Where you'll, you'll go over your left shoulder... And you want to take your hand and hook it around to their other hip, and and so when you're when you go over that that shoulder, you extend your legs out, and then bring them back in. And when you bring them back in, they're on their their back. You're on or no, they'll be up on their side, I think. And you're reaching from the back up around to grab onto the shoulder. Well, I did that, and when I did. He apparently he had his head down or something like that, and I popped him right in the chin, completely unintentionally. I couldn't even see it if I wanted to, because the guy was really, really broad across the back. So, you know, again, it, it was not something where it was intentional. And as a matter of fact, I didn't even think that I hit him all that hard. But, you know, I, I heard him. I heard the click. You know, every time, every time you uh, you click your teeth together, you kind of hear that. Yeah, I heard that, and I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> and so I, I, I apologize profusely because, you know, again, it's not intentional. But anyway, so yeah, if you're out there, you're listening, dude, I'm really, really, really sorry about that. Um, you know, we, we talked afterward, and, and I, I felt that was a better way to address it than to sit and let it fester as a bad feeling or something like that. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, and and I told him a couple times, that I always wear a fucking mouthpiece. I don't give a fuck if I'm alone. I don't give a fuck if we're just flow rolling. I don't care. I don't care if I'm lifting weights. I don't care if I'm on a track running. I don't care if I'm on a fucking logging trail running. I'm wearing a fucking mouthpiece. I mean, I chipped a tooth by falling down while running. You know, I've chipped a tooth getting a fucking elbow in my head or, or bumping heads with people or, you know, getting a knee in the head or an elbow in the head. Shit happens. 
And so, like, you're you're in a situation where two bodies, two minds moving two bodies, are interacting here. There's there's a chance that one of those brains isn't paying attention to what the bo- the other body is doing 100%. And something like an accidental collision, like the one that happened today, can occur. You know, and it's it's not like anybody's being an asshole about it. It's just that you're in a situation where you're simulating combat. You know, the the likelihood, the possibility that you'll actually experience real physical damage from this simulated combat is significantly higher than if you were, say sitting on your couch with a fucking remote control and a beer in your hand. There's nobody, you know, trying to trying to get it get an arm bar on you on that couch. You know? And so there's there's nobody that's that's adjusting their legs and their arms trying to trying to get in and lock in that perfect arm bar on you. And so, yeah. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, dude, but really you know, you're you're like running into a live fire zone without a fucking helmet on and wondering why you got clipped in the head. I mean, come on now. You know, and I hate being cavalier about it. But you know what? I've had to be just as cavalier about other people injuring my teeth. You know? That there there wasn't anything that they were intentionally doing, or at least I hope not. And uh, you know, it's like he, he thought it was, he hit me and then I hit him. No. I, I don't, no. I accept that I'm going to get hit. I accept that I'm going to eat an elbow. I accept that I'm going to eat a knee or a head or something else like that. You know, I've had several injuries that I'm pretty sure they, there was nothing fucking intentional about them. But I still suffered an injury that I had to, I had to sit on my ass for two months and recover from. You know, and so, again, it's simulated combat. People get hurt simulating combat, you know? And it doesn't matter what the setting is, it just, it happens. And it's kind of an accepted thing, you know? I mean, if you if you go and you talk to anybody who has been in the military, they could probably tell you somebody in their training, their, their uh, uh, class of, of uh, trainees died. Just one, maybe. But I mean, like somebody they know or somebody they might have met knows somebody who died during training. You know, they, they were in they were in the water, they were jumping out of airplanes, they were doing live fire. Somebody died during training. And, and it's it's not necessarily something you can you you have to be like sad about or anything, but, you know, if you want to lower the likelihood of it, you, do, you take the fucking precautions that you possibly can to prevent something negative from happening to you. And so, yeah. Again, terribly sorry, dude. Hope you got good good dental or something like that. You can do something about it. But yeah, as far as the movement we were doing, navigating around to the back, I, I found that I wasn't getting my hips in the right position for it. And I mean there there were there were just one or two points and again it was mostly hip related. And, and to that end I've I've had this back injury the last couple of days and it's only today that I really felt confident enough to go in. And, and of course we're doing neon belly so I'm feeling it every time this guy who is slightly heavier than me actually puts his knee on me <laughs> and uh, and there were a couple times where he was he was pretty rough with me so I, I don't I don't feel bad about it I mean I'm sorry it happened but I don't feel bad about it <laughs> I mean <laughs> anyway you know that's it's one of the things about jujitsu is that there's there's always a question of how personal you should take uh, what's going on out there on the the mat. You know that there are some people that genuinely don't like you. You know, and of course they got to put on a face and they got to they got to do everything possible to at least make it not completely obvious that they're intentionally trying to harm you. <laughs> but uh, you know, um, there's uh, 
there's always that thing. It's like, is this person really trying to hurt me? You know, and I, and you you gotta you gotta be keeping that in mind every time that you're out there. And it doesn't matter who you're rolling with. It could be somebody who's your fucking best friend, but you know maybe last time you managed to choke them out, and they're feeling a little salty about that. <laughs> they want a little a little bit of a little bit of payback. You know, of course you you're going to deal with that in the lower belts. I think, you know, until you you get elbowed in the eye a few times, you get kneed in the face a few times, and you kind of figure it out, it's like, dude, I'm doing jiu-jitsu, no wonder I just got kneed in the face, I'm doing jiu-jitsu, no wonder my shoulder hurts, you know, no wonder my, my calf hurts, you know, maybe the, maybe I should have tapped a little quicker, you know, <laughs> and, and really all you can do is, is do the best you can with, with your opponent, or not your opponent, your teammate in this this case your training partner um, but take you know do what you can to try and take care of them you know because they just like you are risking their physical resources their body the only one they got and, and so yeah you want them to be kind to you you got to be kind to them and, and like I said the, the whatever happened today was n- zero intent. I don't hold grudges, and especially not over what happens on the mat, unless, of course, you say something to me that says, that shit was personal. Then I take it personal. But otherwise, eh. hey man, water under the bridge, shit happens. But yeah, so it was a, uh, it was a relatively basic thing that we were doing today, although... The, the complexity came in with the leg entanglements, and that, that was probably the one thing that I had the most trouble with. And, and I, it seemed like my partner might have been having a little difficulty with it, too. But, you know, it's that's just something that happens. And it didn't help that both of us are built about the same way as far as, like, being stocky. He, he's a few inches taller than me, but, like, his, his build, he's like me when I was his age, you know, where he's, I, I don't carry around as, or I'm not currently carrying around as much muscle as he is, um, but yeah, and, and you know what's funny though, it's like, when I was talking to him, I got the impression that, uh, that he and I deal with things a lot, uh, very similarly, and that, you know, that, that little talk, it was absolutely necessary, and, and for both me and him. Because like it, and, and I I even laid it out to him like he 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 paused, and I'm like oh yeah so if you if you hadn't had this conversation with me now, you would have carried this resentment home with you and been stewing on, about it, thinking about it while you're fucking watching TV and shit. And then the next time you came in here, then I would have had to deal with you actually like really intentionally wanting to harm me, to get back over that shit. <laughs> And he's like, yeah, you know, that's, uh, yeah. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm glad we took this time to kind of sort it out. You know, it's necessary. If you give a shit about it, you got to do it. Anyway, let's go ahead and throw down with some music. I know I'm keeping it short on that. Um, But this one, this one's going to be kind of (laughs) special. And uh, we're going to be talking about this uh, one little subject today. And I I don't know how, how much we're going to, but, uh, probably all of it, really. (laughs) Um, but I got this one song that, uh, that I think is so appropriate, especially for what's been going on with, uh, GameStop. And so here it is, Static X, down, first dance, here on Coin Metal. And that was Wayne Static with The Creatures Are Everywhere. Oh, man. And it does seem like the creatures are out and on the hunt for Roy, man. Oi. Apparently, um, apparently conventional markets are starting to, uh, starting to get a little bit of that frothy action. And uh, I was exclaiming to uh, somebody on Twitter the other day, or today rather, that, you know, where did I put it here? I'll look on my, uh, 
Where is it? Oh, here we go. Somebody had, had tweeted, and this is, I guess, Gold, Golden X33 or um, Bashy Crypto. Uh, it says, oh, wait, this is from John T- Tulled, the original w- WSB CEO. It says, breaking, Reddit WSB is banned due to hate speech. Unreal. It's because Wall Street got hurt. Golden X33 says, only the beginning. And I, and I responded by, I have a feeling you are correct. The worst of all outcomes for these fascists was making their employees work from home firing slash laying off large segments of the economy. And they're learning to trade as a result. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, I, I, I really, I, I have to laugh just, just a little bit about it. Because it's like one of those things where, you know, the government just said, "Oh, you know, shut down your business, and you know, if you don't, we're gonna have, we're gonna have people harass you and shit, and you'll look just like the examples you see on TV." Although, I've seen plenty of evidence to suggest that that's just um, that's just fluff, that's just bullshit. But anyway, the point being that by doing this by by having a lot of people that were normally working in an office working at home suddenly they were able to sit at their computer and do things other than work while they were working and one of those things has been day trading cuz you know they figure hey i'm here anyway right <laughs> might as well do a little fucking day trading get give me some of that paper in the meantime And so, apparently, uh, these people were having some issues with regard to stock manipulation. And uh, they kind of got together and just said, you know what, let's fuck these guys. (laughs) Or at least that's how it looks to me anyway. Um, But I I found, where, where is it here? Oh, no, 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 that's not it. I don't know that we're even gonna get to that today. Might not even get to, to that either. Trying to find a, a specific thing. To, oh, here we go. <laughs> and this is on uh, daily dot dot com. Reddit's biggest stock stock market forum implodes under insider trading accusations. And actually, I, I don't know that I want to get into that quite yet. I, I'm trying to find the. Um, I'm trying to find an article that I've got here. No, that's not it. Although we might cover that today. No, that's not it either. We didn't get into that one. Damn it, Jim. I'm trying to find a specific article that I looked up, and it was concerning the um, the debacle that's recently happened on... Oh, where is it here? No, that's not it. Damn it, Jim. GameStop, you know, the the whole shit that's going on with GameStop. I had a whole bunch of shit here, and I cannot find it. So I'm just going to have to look it up again. Anyway, here we go. Short squeeze spreads as day traders hunt the next GameStop. And, um... This is along the lines of what we were talking about earlier. I'm going to try and find one specifically about GameStop. I just went with the first one, and then on the, on the music break, well, I'll dig around a bit and see if I can find the specific page that I was looking for here. Anyway, this is on uh, bizjournals.com, and I'm assuming this is in association with FT. Maybe? Oh, you bastards. It's just a fucking aggregated article from FT. And I do not want to pay for FT, so f- fuck you. Oh, well, let's see. Look it up by news. News, news, news. Go. Um. Yeah, maybe. And maybe. And maybe. Oh shit! Yeah, we might we might be locked down with this thing today. 
Anyway, this first one I got is on FoxBusiness.com. Stephen Cohen's fund point seventy two suffers fifteen percent loss amid GameStop frenzy. NYT. Billionaire investor Stephen Cohen's point seventy two asset management has suffered a nearly fifteen percent loss this year due to a sudden surge in the shares of video game retailer GameStop Corp. The New York Times reported on Wednesday. The losses at Point72, which manages nearly $19 billion in assets, came in part from its investment in hedge fund Melvin Capital Management, which had a massive bet against GameStop, the report said. And I think that's probably how we'll find it is Melvin Capital. But as GameStop soared over 700% over the past two weeks, boosted by increased interest among amateur investors, Melvin faced sudden losses. One of the rescuers was Cohen's hedge fund, which was roughly $1 billion under management with Melvin, NYT said. Point 72 decided to add $750 million, Melvin said, on Monday, Besides accepting an investment of $2 billion from Citadel, the Chicago-based fund led by Ken Griffin. Point 72 declined to comment when contacted by Reuters. A spokesman for Melvin in founded in 2014 by G Gabriel Plotkin said that the fund has closed out its position in GameStop and repositioned the portfolio. Oh man, they must have got completely fucking hosed. Let me see if I can find anything like what I was looking for about Melvin. Where the fuck? No, that's not it. Melvin Capital Management. Do I have something playing music in the background? this shit. Fuckers. I hate that. I hate pop-ups. Fucking motherfuckers. Anyway, um, let me see if I can find this shit. My house. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, here we go. Hopefully, hopefully Bloomberg will give it all to us. And so this, this one is on Bloomberg.com. Reddit crowd bludgeons Melvin Capital in warning to industry. And this is by Catherine Burton and Hema Palmer. So, no. No penis. And uh, this is authored on January 27th, 2021 at 5.34 a.m. PST. The first sign of trouble for hedge fund wonderkind Gabe Plotkin came in late October. A poster on Reddit's popular Wall Street Bets forum was taking aim at his wildly successful investment firm. Quote, GME, GME squeeze and the demise of Melvin Capital, wrote the user, and that was stunks flying up, referred to stock ticker, ticker of GameStop Corp and Plotkin's $12.5 billion firm. Before long, very forgotten Green weighed in, quote, Melvin Capital, new short attack. Then Greek God 1990 says, quote, Melvin vs. WSB and GME to the moon. So it was that the tables turned on Wall Street, and a hedge fund star suddenly found himself at the mercy of the day-trading Reddit bros, who have become one of the most powerful, if improbable forces in the stock market today. The attack on Plotkin's six-year-old Mel six Melvin Capital shifted the balance of power in ways that would have seemed unimaginable only months ago. By Wednesday, the firm had capitulated to amateurs and covered the, the GameStop short. The explosive growth in retail day trading, powered by platforms like Robinhood Trading App and forms like Wall Street Bets, has turned the old order on its head. Melvin Capital's mistake. 
if it can be called that, was leaving footprints behind in the, in the marketplace. Reddit users were able to identify stocks that Melvin was wagering against and then buy those stocks en masse, unleashing a violent run-up in prices that turned Melvin's winning bet into a loser. Read more short sellers crushed like never before as retail army charges. Oh, my God there. Uh, to, uh, so steep were the losses, about 30% through the last week, that Melvin on Monday turned to billionaire hedge fund founders Ken Griffin and Stephen Cohen, Plotkin's former boss, to shore up the firm. As of Tuesday, the fund's losses had increased even with the portfolio repositioning, though investors wouldn't say by exactly how much for fear of angering the money manager, which they expect can still fight its way back. A representative for the firm declined to comment on the on performance other than saying the, per, the portfolio had been repositioned in the past few days and, quote, these social media posts about Melvin Capital going bankrupt are categorically false. Melvin Capital is focused on generating high-quality, risk-adjusted returns for our investors, and we are appreciative of their support. The risk of going long is intuitive. Buy $50 of shares, and if the price drops, you lose that amount. But losses on bearish bets can be more severe and swift. A classic $50 short can lose multiples of the, that amount if the, I'm sorry, can lose multiples of that amount if the stock soars. And while using options may limit losses, investors can get wiped out quickly if the stock rises. The shorts that were listed on Melvin's regulatory filing from the third quarter all rocketed in recent weeks. Names included Bed Bath and Beyond, iRobot Corp and GSX Tech, Tech Edu Inc. GameStop, the, the stock that seemed to set off the short squeeze, soared 634% in the month through Tuesday. That night, Elon Musk tweeted a link to the Reddit thread with the caption, quote, GameStonk, and by mid-Wednesday in New York, the stock more than doubled again. Investors caught in a short squeeze can close out bets and eat their losses or try to run out the price surge, typically requiring they put up more money. Melvin's cash infusion was unheard of in, unheard of in hedge fund land. Griffin, his partners, and the hedge funds he runs at Citadel threw $2 billion and Cohen's .72 capital management which had already had about $1 billion invested in Melvin, ponied up another $750 million. Cohen, one might argue, was bailing out his own investment. For Griffin, it was a rare opportunity to invest in a talented manager on the cheap. Both firms got a minority re revenue share from the, from the firm for stepping in. Late Tuesday, Cohen broke his usual habit of only tweeting about the his New York Mets. Quote, Hey, stock jockeys, keep bringing it, he wrote on the social media platform. Rough, cra rough crowd on Twitter tonight. Hey, stock jo jockeys, keep, it, keep bringing it. Yeah, whatever. Until this year, Plotkin42 had one of the best track records among hedge fund stock pickers. He worked for Cohen for eight years and had been one of his biggest money makers before leaving the firm to form Melvin, named after his grandfather in December 2014. So good was Plotkin's reputation that the firm closed to additional investors before word had even spread that he was setting out on his own. Despite a loss in 2018, he's posted an annualized return of 30% since opening ending last year up more than 50%, according to an investor. Then came January, when Melvin first became aware that a Reddit crowd had put a target on the firm's positions, ramping up an attack on GameStop 
and other shorts. Exposing Positions Why they singled out Melvin remains a mystery. As far as hedge fund managers go, Plotkin is considered low-key. He doesn't show up at many conferences or hobnob at, so at society balls. Former colleagues and current investors say he's a nice, quiet guy, not the type to make enemies. The most obvious explanation is that his positions were in some sense knowable. Hedge funds generally go to great lengths to guard their short positions. If they use put options, for example, they buy them over the counter, which means they don't have to list them in regulatory filings. Plotkin's filing in the third quarter showed, uh, showed put options on 17 companies, many of them highly shorted names. Quote, There's no targeting going on. WSP is far less organized than all the articles are making it out to be, said Lucas Severin, a member of the, the Wall Street Bets. Quote, From time to time, WSB gets obsessed with some stock, now it's GME, and for the first time ever, this stock just keeps giving. Melvin's losses mounted on in January after they passed 15% last week. It had conversations with investors and got commitments of about $1 billion for February 1st. By the end of last week, losses had mounted to about 30%. On Monday morning, Plotkin reached a deal with Point72 and Citadel to provide him with more liquidity to help put Melvin back on the offensive. That Cohen would step in made sense, given his long-standing relationship with Plotkin, and an initial investment of about $200 million in the firm that had grown to about $1 billion. Griffin, who had started Citadel in 1990, has a history of swooping in when others are in distress. He's hired teams or took on assets from hedge funds such as Sowood Capital Management, Visium Asset Management, and Amaranth Advisors after they imploded. He may have also welcomed the chance to invest in Plotkin's fund Mark Melvin generally manages money for charitable organizations like endowments and foundations. New Risk Investors have been expressing faith that Plotkin... Huh. My apologies, sir. Investors have been expressing faith that Plotkin will climb out of this hole. Griffin said on Monday that he, he and his partners, quote, have great confidence in Gabe and his team. Cohen called him, quote, an exceptional investor and leader. A person familiar with the thinking inside Plotkin's firm once said one lesson is clear. Don't leave a trace and only buy put options over the counter. Quote, this phenomenon of retail investors jumping on a bandwagon to dominate trading activity is a new kind of portfolio risk, said J. Raffaldini, Raffaldini, my apologies, a global head of sales and distribution at UBS O'Connor. Quote, it's going to cause a lot of hedge funds to rethink how they approach their long and short investment strategies. With assistance by Sarah Pine, anyway. Yeah, so that's very interesting. You know, these uh, hedge fund managers, they've been manipulating shit for a long time. You know, so the, the fact that it's coming back to bite them in the ass, eh. You know, I mean, hey, this is, uh, this is not patty cake, you know? We're playing for real money. And so, uh, I, don't, I don't really know what to tell these guys. I think that any kind of... Uh, market activity like this it's temporary but it's fun <laughs> you know and hopefully you're lucky enough to get in on it you know let's see here I wanted to go a little bit further into this and let's see here um, this is on uh, reddit reddit.com 
and it's in r slash wall street bets dot com or wall street bets the game the gme after hours thread part 4.20 on 27th january so apparently that was today uh, let's see here stop spamming copy paste you boomers insta bans being held out handed out yeah that's a good idea well, let's look at the comments on this I need a sleeping pill says flux capacitor 33 um, and that was just now uh, Walmart Paul Walker says please help retards before market open I know very little. I want to ride to the moon and stick it to these fucking boomers. I have some free cash. I'm going. I'm going retard on on the Robin Hood call options. I think. Does this help the goal, or should I just straight buy? This is money. I'm fine with losing. What is my plan? Thank you, and please respond before market open. <laughs> the tendy man cometh says awesome Dan twenty four. Um, let's see, RMFT4660 says big dick energy in here right now. <laughs> oh man. Let's see, Get Mad 2020 says shit, what's to stop everybody in the world via some internet connected platform? Everyone putting a few books into short to kill a company that is doing humanity bad via Wall Street bet style. Not a goddamn thing, get mad. Oh, yeah. Let's see. And Teltrix says a serious question for a ser from a serious idiot. Doesn't this rocket break breaking rule three about market manipulation? I'm sure I'm misunderstanding here, but would a kind soul please ELIF? <sighs> Metaphoric Rock says, fuck, should I drop more into game? <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah, GME. Oh, let's see here. About 100 shares at $312 at close, and guess what? I'm buying more tomorrow, it says ne Neox29. Um, math underscore, need, need to get out of Alley Invest. Where, where should I move my money? Feedback on Weeble. You know, you got to start wondering about uh, Robin Hood and their capability to deal with the increase in interest. But uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, I think that these guys are going to continue to get hosed. But you really got to start start checking your chart. And as a matter of fact, I'll do that right now. Nah, see if I can bring up a chart for GME. A chart. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, wow. Looking at the one month, it's just like a straight up curve and it doesn't look like it's done yet. It hasn't, it hasn't done the idiot march. And that, that's just where it goes completely parabolic off the page. And, uh, I don't know, we may see that. Let me see if I can find a real, real chart. Because this isn't serving my interest. Here we go, GME Interactive Chart on Yahoo Finance, or Finance.Yahoo. Oh, wow. So it's at uh, 347.51 right now. It's up 199.53. And it closed at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I, I'm assuming that there's probably some aftermarket trading going on on some exchange or another. Um, but, but looking at the one day, yeah, it's it's a straight pinnacle, but it, I don't know. It looks like from the trajectory, it might it might continue to do that for a while. But let's break it down to the week. I want to see if there's any other uh, any other movements on the chart that look like this. Well, maybe we will have to go to the one month. No, Jesus Christ. According to the month, it's just a straight up vertical shot. And I don't know. Judging from the pitch on on it, uh, I would say you still got a little bit of run. 
but I could be wrong. I mean, it's like completely vertical, and it's... I don't know that it's ever done this before, because I'm looking on, on the uh, the one-month chart, and I don't see any other movement on the on this chart that even looks anything like that. I mean, like, if, if you look at the chart, the the nearest it's got is, like, this, this run from, like, 2005 to 2008 that happened over three fucking years. It did an equivalent of that spike, uh, of that run, and actually a doubling of that run in about a week. <laughs> so, I mean, less than a month according to this chart. So, yeah, um... I, this is kind of unprecedented according to the chart I'm looking at. I mean, like, if I scrunch it down to the smallest to where I can see it from 2003 to 2023 is visible on this chart. Um, but when I'm looking at it, there, there's no movement anywhere on this chart that looks anything like this. So, I don't know, maybe this is the beginning of a new mega trend or something. I, but you know again judging from the look of the pitch on this on this chart it it looks like it's going to continue to go up and as a matter of fact i got this other article in here where is it here here we go and uh, this one's on msn.com gamestop's wild ride has even indian retail investors joining in and this is by Rano Joy Mazumadar. Mazumdar. And, um, yeah, I, I have no clue there. I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to guess. Oh, and, um, Ishika Mukherjee. I, I'm going to, I'm going to venture a guess and say yes and no penis. And, uh, this is authored approximately an hour ago. Bloomberg, India's day traders are stopping in for the GameStop Corp ride that's taken equity markets by storm. The, the re video game retailer was among the five most traded names over the past week on Stockall, a platform for Indian retail investors to trade U.S. equities. GameStop has accounted for about 15% of all trades on the platform, the co-founder and co-chief executive officer, Siddhashwa Srivastava Shri 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 said in an interview, my, my apologies, Siddhashwa, quote, we are not expecting Indians, we were not expecting Indians would be on Reddit reading about GameStop, Srivastava Shri said. Unlike many of the um, their options heavy Wall Street bets counterparts, Indian traders aren't allowed to take on leverage while trading foreign stocks. He said, quote, "These are all trading in cash." GameStop has exploded onto trading screens with the stock up more than 1,700 percent this year. That that that's over the last month, fueled by trader talk on forums and Elon Musk's. Game Stunk tweet, it's taken professionals by surprise and squeezed shorts at major hedge funds. In in other as in other markets, with more Indians staying indoors since the pandemic struck, many have flocked to stock markets at home and abroad, leading to a surge in retail investing. According to Stockall, their favorites in the U.S. have been the likes of Tesla Inc. and Apple Inc. with COVID-19 va vaccine maker Moderna Inc. and Chinese electronic vehicle firm Neo Inc. Being, uh, rising up the rankings in the recent months. In 11 hours of pure mania, 100% stock gains popped up everywhere. GameStop, GameStop's extreme gains pushes the market cap to $24 billion. Apparently, those are all titles of articles. Um, Dipe Chatterjee, a, a Mumbai-based marketing consultant, is one such investor. He's bought GameStop and Tesla in recent months, 
making a 150% return on his $1,000 investment in the game's retailer earlier this week before swiftly booking profits. Quote, it's a game with real skin in it, he said. Reddit's Wall Street Bets forum earlier, earlier briefly turned itself off amid surge in new participants. The site had racked up more than 3 million members as day traders plugged companies like GameStop. For more articles, please join us at Bloomberg. And we don't need any more articles that said it pretty much as good as it needs to be said. The planet is getting in on this shit. <laughs> I mean, you, you gotta you gotta look at it and think, this is something that started because of cryptocurrency. And as a matter of fact, it, all of it from fuck uh, from the platform stock all to TD Ameritrade to Robinhood, all of these apps are a product of the way that we've traded on cryptocurrency markets, where we've had the the wild volatility. And these guys have gotten a taste of it and what that looks like and how to pull it off. I mean, literally, it's it. they're making legacy markets behave like cryptocurrency markets. And that's that's really, really interesting. I, and like I said, I think it's a product over like the last few years, cryptocurrency being as hot a market as it's been has oriented people with this kind of trading and these kind of expectations. And so now people are out there intent on making it real. You know, they watch all kinds of videos on YouTube from other people that have invested before them and shown them the way on how to do it. They're talking with people that have been trading in cryptocurrency markets since 2014. You know, those are the people that are encouraging you to trade on apps and shit. Is the people that have been trading on apps like that since 2014-2015. They're the ones saying to their parents and their neighbors and their other relatives, hey, yo, you ought to check this this out. This is how I'm making money. And so, of course, they're coming into the market. And, of course, some people are going to get wrecked. You know, I can't look at this thing and think there isn't somebody getting ready to counter trade it and successfully do so. Anyway, let's go ahead and throw back down with some music. And as far as where to go, hmm. Here we go. Little nothing face. Make your own bones. You're on coin metal. And that was Dream Theater. I, I didn't actually catch the name of the song. I was too busy watching Doge. Jesus Christ. This stuff has been freaking out. Freaking out, man. Freaking out. It's currently at 37. It was all the way up to 46. Holy shit. And it's all over my Twitter feed. It was funny. I, I thought I'd like accidentally specifically looked it up for something, but all of a sudden the fucking hashtag for Dogecoin is all over the place. It's like, whoa. People like the Doge. I like the Doge. Anywho, as far as what else we were going to get into. Let's see, we covered Stephen Cohen's thing. Here we go. And uh, this one's on uh, msn.com. And we, we hardly ever refer to them, but, you know, hey, we got to give them their props if they write something good, right? And uh, this is by a whole slew of fucking people. Holy crap. Now let's refresh this. Just check and verify that that's... Wow. <clears throat> so apparently it took several people to write this. I guess it takes a village after all, right? Um, GameStop, Reddit, explaining what's happening in the stock market. David Ingram and Lucy Lucy Bailey and Stephanie Rule and Jolene Kent and Ezra Kaplan and Jason Abruzis. So yeah, some... Some penises and some vaginas in there. Anyway, continuing. Suddenly, Wall Street can't stop talking about GameStop, 
a video game retailer whose stock price is popping far beyond what most people think it's worth. Why is everyone talking about GameStop? The simplest answer is its stock price has skyrocketed by somewhere around 8,000% over six months. The more complex the answer is that, it, it's, that its stock has become the center game piece of a financial power struggle between major hedge fund Melvin Capital and a group of amateur stock traders who yell on the internet. Mike Novogratz, an investor and former hedge fund, hedge fund manager, said the internet activity is the result of frustration that everyday investors are often locked out of lucrative opportunities, such as initial public offerings. Quote, what it really feels like is the game is stacked against the little guy, he said. What is GameStop? GameStop is a video game retailer. Like most stores that still sell products in person, it has had a hard time lately as video game sales have moved online as the COVID-19 pandemic keeps people away from stores. It's still in business, but few people expect it to grow again. I don't know about that. How did it end up in the middle of all of this? Like many companies that are in rough shape, GameStop was the subject of what's called short selling, in which professional, professional investors borrow shares of stock to sell them and then buy them back later so they can return it, which lets them pocket profits if the stock price goes down. They're basically bets that the company will fail. GameStop was one of the most shorted of all publicly traded companies. Other companies on the list include AMC Theaters, Bed Bath & Beyond, and even the mostly defunct Blockbuster. Remember those names? <laughs> and then the source of the short squeeze. The, and then it became the source of a short squeeze, rather. What is a short squeeze? For the most part, investors follow the quote buy low, sell high format when it comes to stocks. Short sellers do the opposite. They borrow and sell a stock when it's high and bet that it will continue to fall. If that doesn't happen and the stock price rises, short sellers are forced to cover their positions or buy more stocks to minimize their losses. Because short sellers frequently hedge funds, in essence are betting against a company's success, it can be a risky position. Any positive news or enthusiasm for the stock will push the stock's valuation, minimizing profit for the short seller. In the case of GameStop, chatter on massive online trading forums invigorated interest in buying the stock, pushing up the price which in turn fueled more interest. The speculative trading left short sellers with no more shares to buy to cover their positions, creating a short squeeze and leaving them with millions of dollars in stocks that they had bought at a high price, but which they then had to offload at an even higher price. As three partners of financial data companies said Wednesday that its analysts found that Short sellers had lost $23.6 billion on GameStop this month. Holy sh shit bags, that's a lot of fucking money. How does the internet fit in? <laughs> the internet has been used to prognosticate about stocks for decades, but there's never been anything quite like the Reddit community called r slash wall street beds also known as wsb oh dude you fucking people are so late to the game this shit has been going on in crypto for fucking years since like 2015 there have been quote unquote amateur groups of traders getting together and working shit out on the market you guys are just getting a taste of it now in conventional markets because the fucking Fed and, and the, the uh, SEC and the FinCEN and the CFTC have been putting all kinds of regulatory pressure on crypto. Well, you know what? F -f 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 fuck you. Continuing on. <clears throat> 
WSB takes something of an internet extremist's approach to investing. Its slogan is, like 4chan found, uh, I, I love this too, like 4chan found a Bloomberg terminal, alluding to the fringe message board and the Bloomberg computer system that is nearly, ubiqui nearly ubiquitous in finance. Amateur investors on WSB have discussed GameStop, which they refer to by its stock ticker ab abbreviation GME, for years. But things changed early this year. As the price of the shares rose, more WSB posters jumped on board. Quote, 100% of my portfolio on GME because of you idiots, a person posted on January 10th. On Wednesday, the people who run WSB temporarily made the community private and said they were experiencing technical difficulties based on the unprecedented scale as, of, as a result of the newfound interest in WSB. There's also Robinhood, the app that is the unofficial stock trading platform of choice for WSB. It lets people trade stocks and even more exotic instruments, like options, for little or no charge. So what if a bunch of people bought GameStop, uh, GameStop stock? This is where things get a little complicated and a little bit more unclear. Shares in GameStop ticked up on January 11th after it named three people to its board of directors as part of a deal with shareholders who had been agitating for change. That caused some short sellers to abandon their positions, helping to drive the stock up more in the following days. The only emboldened, that only emboldened traders on WSB, quote, can't stop, won't stop, game stop, a person wrote on January 14th, along with a clip from the movie, quote, The Wolf of Wall Street. The stock traded about even for the next few days. Things really began to change starting Friday. What happened Friday? CNBC data shows that the volume of shares traded, a closely watched indicator of activity around the stock, spiked on Friday. Increased volume can in indicate a short squeeze, meaning people who had bet against the stock either, clo either chose or were forced to give up and take losses. And while WSB had gotten some media attention in recent days for its GameStop boom boosterism, a boom in coverage of GameStop and WSB helped bring the story out of the financial world and more into the mainstream. The frenzy was on. GameStop shares would go from trading at around $43, already significantly more than it traded at the beginning of the year, to as much as $380, becoming one of the most traded stocks on the market along the way. Tesla CEO Elon Musk, the world's wealthiest person, who has also publicly battled short sellers, tweeted out Tuesday, quote, GameStonk with a link to WSB. GameStonk is a reference to GameStop and to Stonk, internet slang for stock. Does this matter to ordinary investors? Yes. For one thing, the, tr the volume of trading has strained the computer infrastructure of online brokerages, including TD Ameritrade which said Wednesday that its mobile app was handling unprecedented volumes. At least on paper, and at least on paper, ordinary investors are making money even if they're not paying attention. BlackRock, which operates mutual funds, may have made billions of dollars from the rise in GameStop shares alone. But the bigger and longer-lasting impact may be on how the market itself operates. Never before has, an, has a group of amateur investors taken on a hedge fund like this and won. The battle over GameStop is taking something of a David versus Goliath feel, with some people outside finance painting it as a reckoning for parts of Wall Street. Quote, 
For years, the same hedge funds, private equity firms, and wealthy investors, dismayed by GameStop trades, have treated the stock market like their own personal casino, while everyone else pays the price, Senator Elizabeth Warren, D. Massachusetts, said in a news release. Quote, It's long past time for the SEC and other financial regulators to wake up and do their jobs. And with new administration and Democrats running Congress, I intend to make sure they do. Yeah, whatever. Or, as Reddit co-founder Alexis Ohanian put it on Twitter, the GameStop squeeze, quote, is the public doing what they feel has been done to them by institutions. I did I, I, yeah, yeah. Quote, and it's a perfect storm at a time when lots of people are hurting, interest rates are low, inescapable student loan debts loom, and every major institution has caught losses during a quote, quote sorry, a, a slash global pandemic over the last year. This is something to believe in, he said. How will the market be different after this? There is some belief that WSB signals the arrival of a powerful new force, as large numbers of retail investors find influence by acting in concert or following one another into a big trade. That may serve as a check or balance on other large forces, such as hedge funds, which are used to throwing around their weight without ordinary investors affecting the price. Quote, R slash Wall Street Bets is a top 20 global hedge fund with 2.9 million followers under management at six, $6,200 each and not one boring research report in sight. Financial analyst Genevieve Ronch Dector said sarcastically on Twitter, What's the downside? Should I be worried about the market as a whole? <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough question. Right now, the speculation activity is only around a few companies, which isn't that uncommon, but the broader concern comes when what are known as retail investors, i.e. the market, amateur investors buying stocks for their own personal gain. God damn, they say that like that's something evil or something. Become overly exuberant and inflate stock prices, sometimes by taking out loans to buy shares. Dude, that's, that's not safe. Don't do that. Anyway, continuing. And some skeptics point to the situation around GameStop and other companies as evidence that the stock market has reached a dangerous level of enthusiasm and speculation. Dude, it has always been this dangerous. You're just... More more people are just being exposed to it by their own choosing, of course. Massachusetts regulator William Galvin compared the situation Wednesday to the 1999 tech stock bubble. Quote, The current pandemic has created a unique situation where many people who have gotten into Dave trading really have no, no idea exactly what they're doing, he told CNBC. Quote, they think they're missing out if they don't make a bet. How does this end? Often a short squeeze ends and a price is falling back down to where it was before the drama started. In 2008, when Volkswagen was in the middle of a trader tug of war, it briefly became the stock market's most valued company. But its price settled down eventually. History suggests that no stock can go up forever. <clears throat> and over time, stock prices generally reflect the expected future earnings of corporations. But long shots can go on for extended periods if the players have enough resources to risk. Tesla, for example, would need 1,600 years of profits to justify its current price-to-earnings ratio according to a calculation this month. Uh, not necessarily true. That's assuming that their productive capacity and their thus their profitability stays the same as it is right now, which, being Tesla, I severely doubt. Continuing on. 
GameStop shares may move about 20% a day th through March if option trades are an indication, Barron's reported. Well, we're, we're definitely clicking on that one. Is someone going to shut this down? No. There is no evidence that any of this is illegal, although NASDAQ CEO Adina Friedman set, has said that stock exchanges and regulators need to pay attention to the potential for schemes fueled by social media. Reddit didn't answer questions Wednesday about whether it is in touch with regulators, but it said it prohibits posting illegal content or facilitating illegal transactions. Quote, we will review and cooperate with valid law enforcement investigations or actions as needed, Reddit said in a statement. Galvin said he believed federal regulators would take some action. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said Wednesday that the Biden administration's economic team was, quote, monitoring the situation around trading in GameStop. Why am I hearing about AMC Theaters stock too? Remember how we said AMC Theaters is one of the other companies that has been targeted by short sellers? Well, WSB and now other amateur investors are going after those short positions, hoping to induce a similar short squeeze. AMC shares were up by 265% on Wednesday, and the enthusiasm was still spreading to other well-known consumer brands. Bed Bath & Beyond shares were up by 176% Wednesday from the start of the year, while Tootsie Roll Industries, the candy maker known for its iconic 20th century commercials, was up by 41% since January 1st. There may even be a new term for such internet darlings, meme stocks. Uh, if you think that all, all that's behind this is is fucking meme stocks, I no no. <clears throat> I would argue that this is probably some reorganization on these uh, <laughs> on on the uh, part of these institutions. You know that they're probably counter trading their own their own uh, shorts, just to try and recover the losses that they're incurring on the other side. And in, in that sense, it's kind of if they were doing that counter trade, which I would assume they probably are, um, it would be against their better interests in the long term on those positions to start getting up anybody's ass about, oh, we got to shut down social media. No, man, they want you throwing money at that shit. Because, again, no matter what they've got on the short side of it, they are probably they are probably playing the long side of it, too. And so they, they're just as likely to abandon those long positions as they were to abandon the short positions. And like it said in this article, that's exactly what they did. So, again, they, and shit, we read it earlier too that they, they already said that they, they themselves said that they're repositioning. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta take all of this kind of in context to really know how to play that market. And, and like I said, I'm, I looked at that market, I, I looked at that chart. There, there's, nothing really like quote unquote natural about that. I mean, that's not organic growth. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's organic growth in that it's people like you and me that are throwing money at it. It's not organic growth in that it's very, very targeted. And when you look at the rest of the chart, even, even back as far as 2003 for GameStop, you don't see any fucking activity that looks anything like that fucking space needle and that's what it looks like man you look at the thing on the chart it's completely vertical and so you know again it's targeted which means it's probably going to be a very short time window I mean given the the pitch of that I would expect it to continue to ride up just a little bit further but not too much 
you know you might want to if you if you've been in it for a while and you know you, you think you've made a significant amount of money and you might you might want to consider taking an allocation at least off the table take your profit but don't don't abandon entirely. I mean, if you saw something good enough to put the money down on, chances are it's still good. Again, you have to fucking watch your chart. If you're not doing TA on on like the the fucking five minute or whatever, you you may in fact get wrecked on this shit. You know, I mean, it, it's all possible. It's possible that you can walk away with profit. It's possible that you can go away wrecked. The difference will be how close attention you pay to your investments. I mean, how how much do you really care? <laughs> you know? And it's it's one of these things that allows people like Melvin, you know, the Melvin Capital Place or Capital Investments or whatever. Um it's the leeway that their partnerships that they've built over time have allowed them to operate. You know, it's like this thing with uh, with them getting injected by, to, what, $2.7 billion? I mean, Jesus Christ, I wish I could snap my fingers and say, hey, yo, friends, can you throw down some money really quick and get me out of this fucking hole? I mean, I, I wish I could do that. And, and you know... This is something that some people would mistakenly dub quote unquote white privilege. I'd be more than willing to bet that all of the people involved in this thing are not white. Regardless, either way, what you have to say to yourself is that these are people that have had investment partnerships with people, they've helped people make money with tips and whatnot. And so, I mean, if, if, if somebody helps you make money, are you going to feel bad about them? Are you going to hate them? Or are you going to like them? You're going to fucking like them. They, they help you put money in your pocket, right? Well, it's the same thing. You know, this guy had, had a really big issue and he had some friends help him settle it. You know, you're going to hate on him for it, for having friends, for developing some relationships. Why? You know? But anyway, so, I don't know what to think of all of this, to tell you the truth. I mean, I, I think it, in all it's good, in that people like you and me are finally kind of figuring out their position in all of this, you know? That we actually represent a, a lot of a lot of power, a lot of political power, a lot of economic power that we don't typically give ourselves credit for. But like I said, you're gonna have to watch it. At this point in the game, there are going to be institutional investors rubbing elbows with you on your positions. You know. And I mean, this is always the situation, but I think that, you know, we, we tend to, when we're looking around on social media and we're, we're seeing all of our friends that we're following from WSB and we're following in fucking Discord and, and all those other places, and we're, we're seeing what's going on, it's, it's really easy to start getting a monocular vision about exactly what's going on and exactly who is involved. And to just assume that it's it's everyday traders like you, and it's all just everyday traders like you, uh, this is folly, kids. Complete and utter folly. It is not just you. <laughs> it's never just you. I mean, as a matter of fact, the Fed is a big holder of stocks. <laughs> you know, it's. It's something not really publicized too much, but it, it, it's it's a truth. Anyway, let's go ahead and throw back down with some music. And, uh, you know, we have not played any infectious groups tonight. So here we go. Punk it up. 
here on Coin Metal. And that was Anthrax with the Giant. And it is with that that I'd like to close out this episode. Thank you very much for listening. I certainly do appreciate your support. Uh, we will be back again on Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And so until then, I want you all to trade safe. Do your homework. And watch out for your own bunghole because nobody else is going to do it for you. <laughs> and so for, as far as our last dance is concerned, of course I haven't picked anything out. You know, I just don't do that. Um, but I'm sure I can scrounge something good for you guys. Let's see here. No, clutch. No, 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 no. Chamber. No, no, no. No, 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 no. You know what? I think I might have played one song by Meshuggah, but, you know, I, I had a couple doubles today, so I'm going to forgive myself for this. But it seems to me like in mathematics, when uh, you have an equation that both sides even out. You get this occurrence called concatenation. And so that's what we're going to go ahead and go for for our last dance. Mashuga, concatenation. Last dance here on Coin Metal. Thank you again for listening, and you all have an excellent evening. Good night.